Kara, you've just been nominated for directing the episode after of The Handmaid's Tale season two. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you, thank you so much. I, it was a just a true surprise and I feel blessed. So tell us about the morning of the nominations announcement and where you were and how you found out. It was terribly inelegant. Actually, I was sound asleep and somebody called me. <laughs> I, I'd been shooting, so I was, um, I was you know, I, I was off kilter time frame wise and uh, yeah, woke me up and said, oh my God. And uh, I had lost track of what days it was going to be announced. So um, yes, I was truly uh, flabbergasted and uh, inarticulate as hell. <laughs> um, you know, I talk about this with a lot of people, but it's always lovely, no matter what you do in, in, in your profession, to be given that pat on the back from your um, your peers or from the industry. What, what do accolades and good reviews and that kind of feedback mean to you as a professional director? Well, you know, it, it means on the on the on the first and foremost thing, it's just uh, joy because you feel like people are embracing your work, and um, it's a validation, I suppose. And you know, it's a, a, a negative a negative um, anything negative in the press kills you. It, you know, is soul sucking. So when people applaud your work, um, it is a, a an elevation. It, you know, it kind of makes it all seem make, to make sense. Um, professionally speaking, of course, you have to look for award-winning material to do more award-winning material. So work begets work. And, um, you know, that's kind of the point of it all. So it means certainly um, uh, on the practical side, it means better work coming down your, you know, coming down your way. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really good point. A lot of people do say that. And thinking of how you were nominated for After, um, you are directed uh, more than one episode, uh, for example, Women's Work. There's a few episodes, actually, that you've been um, uh, at the helm of. What went into the thought process of submitting this particular episode? You know, um, it was a bit hard because, uh, as you can imagine, um, you know, you work on any project and, it, and they all become your darlings, you can't really tell the difference between, because you all, you know, the hard work that went into all of them. So I wasn't really, um, I think, able to make that choice terribly, terribly easily because I, I had this year four different ones to choose from. I could only submit one. So I asked a lot of people and I was still divided. <laughs> so I tossed a coin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you tossed a coin, that's so cool. I mean, you know, I did feel like this particular episode had a real cinema to it and it had, um, uh, it went, it had a big journey. It went from, you know, we sort of sucked the soul out of uh, Gilead with the death of all the handmaidens and um, I was igniting, um, uh, first of all, I was showing that and then second of all, um, hold on, my, my phone's ringing there. Um, so, second of all, I was um, now refinding Offred because early in an earlier episode, um, we had, you know, Ann Dowd had destroyed Offred, um, or destroyed June, finally, and Offred was in charge. So then there were two episodes in between, and then it was my job to now, you know, she found her, um, her way in, back into paper. It, at the end of the episode, it was like refinding her purpose. She uh, and it was it was a fantastic moment, um, which I didn't even really realize until the um, there's this crazy guy who's going around and he's polishing the floor right next to me. <laughs> so I have to show you. Look, 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 look! I have to show you. <laughs> anyway, you try to prepare as a director. I'm sure you're used to this, right? You just prepare. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to my world. You know, I'm always in a plane. I'm always running somewhere, um, and uh, I happen to be running next to someone who's um, polishing the floor. Anyway, um, uh, so that episode went from this bleak, horrible, uh, emotional moment where we saw all the handmaids. Um, uh, destroyed by the loss of their friends and loved ones. And then, um, and, and Dowd also lamenting, which I think was very important for me to see that she not only had a heart, but that in, in a weird way, these deaths had equalized everybody. Mm. So 
the, the episode went from that to this ignited moment where Alfred um, literally, you know, uses the pen like a detonator and, um, uh, you know, uh, much like the detonator in the, um, in the episode six, I guess it was, she, you know, the pen was mightier than the sword and she clicked it. Um, so we went from this bleak place to a weird, um, she allied herself with the devil and yet she found herself in doing that. Wow. Um, what does it mean to you that this show, uh, that you have had a big part in bringing to life, has become so relevant and so kind of important in, in, in our pop culture? Well, you know, it's been a, an amazing journey. I, I think what is more startling is that uh, back when the book was written, it was also, it, it, it hit pop culture similarly. So, um, the point of the voice of this book being relevant again 25 years later, I think is as telling as anything. Have we moved on? Have we changed? She, she foretold a future, but it was also based on the present at the time, which people are forgetting that there was a lot going on in the world um, around the time of the, the writing of this book. Um, as I've heard Margaret Atwood say, um, nothing in the book and therefore certainly in season one didn't happen it all happened she just made a a fiction of it but um it did all happen somewhere in the world so i guess that's as we should look at that or recognize that that is part of the the you know the cautionary tale that we're we're telling here yeah and then to make it uh, even more exciting um the show has won so many awards and accolades and it swept the field at the Emmys last year. How did it feel to be part of the team um, of the show that won pretty much everything at the Emmys last year? It was spectacular. And I, fortunately, I was there. Because I had directed the 10th episode, but I, it, uh, it had aired too late to enter and, and so on, um, they invited me to come along because I was just, you know, one of the team. and so. Uh, we enjoyed, uh, I, so it was so nice of them to include me, uh, not knowing, of course, whether they'd win or not, but um, so I was able to uh, experience the Emmys and be, you know, just part of the, um, I guess, energy of, of uh, winning that particular night. So, um, so I'm coming to this year uh, with, you know, even more excitement because this time I, I am also nominated, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. And also... I think the most amazing part of it, besides the celebration of it, is the celebration of, of what it is, what it represents. And in this political climate, the sort of water cooler effect is having of talking about the issues and, and, um, and igniting And I, I would credit uh, along with other, other events, but um, I think some of the empowerment of the women who were able to come forward in the Me Too movement, I'm sure were um, emboldened by by this series. Uh, you know, amongst other other events and, and series and and other uh, uh, you know, political situations. Um, but I feel like the you know it, it's important for all kinds of reasons. Um, it's a bit of the vitamins in the ice cream. Yeah, um, as a director um, in television. Um, for a lot of them that I speak to mention that they come into an existing show that has, you know, a showrunner and writers and a team of people who have created the look and feel of the show and they come in and kind of try to give their own spin on things or at least try to build on what's already been done. Do you find that that's what's happened with this particular show and how you your input has um, helped the show develop to where it is now? Well, I'm, I'm obviously one of many on a, on a really terrific team who are all doing the best work they've they've ever done I guess you know all of us together so um, there's no question it's television in particular um, I, I think all everything in the entertainment business actually it's fair to say is a, a village so um, you know I get to be in the position which is often very precarious mm -hmm. of doing a certain amount of picking and choosing and cherry picking hopefully what I think are the best ideas and bringing my own thoughts to it and trying to shape I, my my by design I'm I'm asked to 
shape and color the thing. But um, truthfully, I'm only as good as the team that's, that's aboard. Uh, in the case of this particular show, what was really so special about it was the fact that um, you were really asked to bring your particular vision. So, um, you know, there was nothing too creative. You, you really were asked to push the envelope and um, uh, be bold and uh, don't self-edit and, uh, you know, take risks, big creative risks. Uh, if you felt you'd seen it before, don't do it again. You know, really push the envelope. So that really, I think, across the board has created a, a very special space where creative people on this show are really um, uh, empowered. And that is made, and you know, it's sort of a, a tale, a, a tale to be told to everyone that when you hire people to do their job and they do it, um, gosh, uh, they can do it really well. So I think one of the things about the, particularly the television industry, but um, you know, would be could be said of the the studio side, of the feature side, indies not so much, but because uh, indies are more embracing of a voice. But the corporatization of of entertainment means by definition, you are really not allowed to have a voice. This particular show embraces and expects you to, you know, sing. So obviously you're given material uh, and there, it's, it all starts from the writing. But within that, Bruce, one of his particular signatures is that he leaves a lot of room for performance and for cinema. And so you're expected and, and, and encouraged and, uh, I mean, it's marvelous uh, to come up with ways of telling this, that story in that episode uh, that are unique to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as a director, I, I would think that I'd be feeling really wonderful when I see so many cast members nominated in the acting fields. And the Handmaid's Tale, you've got... Um, apart from Joseph Fiennes, who was a great surprise nominee on the male side, so many women um, nominated, um, including Samira Wiley, Alexis Liddell, and Elizabeth Moss, and particularly someone like Kelly Jen Rett, who was um, a surprise nominee, uh, and obviously her performance was in one of your episodes, Women's Work. What does it feel like to have all of these actors nominated who, um, in part, would be uh, thanking someone like yourself for the performances that they were able to give? You know, uh I can tell you, um, I, it's. I'm very, very proud of their work. I had nothing to do with it other than honestly giving them the space, the safe place, to um, to be who they are. Because I passed on the same safe space that I was working in to them, and to Samira, to Samira when she that heartbreaking scene, and I was weeping at the monitors. Um, you know, I just figured out a way that I was able to support her and what she wanted to do with that moment. Um, you know, the same with all of the the, um, the nominees. I really, we talked about, you know, what is it you need to do what you want to do here? Of course, we talk about the scene, and we make sure we're making the same scene. But um, honestly, um, uh, I think the joy that I had in watching that was just being in the room. <laughs> I, I wish I could take a small amount of credit, but it, I, the credit is all theirs. Yeah. Um, why? Well, I, I know you've spoken about this before, but I'm curious to hear it from you um, directly. Why are women so? Um, why do they have more opportunities in TV directing, especially drama directing? People like Mimi Leader and Michelle McLaren, Leslie Lynn Gladder. These are names that have kind of like started to kind of rule TV. And I know yourself, someone like Reed Morano won last year in the Emmys. Why is that? Why do they have more opportunity? Uh, well, uh, I think it's body of work, you know, you work begets work back to my earlier conversation. Um, so people work, particularly in television, um, you know, it's not a, it's a risk averse business. So people want to work with people that they know will deliver a certain, a certain show or a certain, um, aesthetic or, or just, you know, trust. So it's hard to break in male or female. Um, I think men, by, by the nature of the business, have had, you know, more opportunities, more doors open, so that there's just more of them as a result. Um, when uh, you open the door, 
to try to fi find a female um, director who has a body of, of work, it's hard to do because they haven't been hired. So you have to start, it has to start at an earlier stage. It has to start in school. Um, you know, I was, uh, the school will remain nameless, but recently, like within the last two years, one of the big um, uh, film schools, I said, uh, so what's your ratio of men to women? And you know, it was not good. It was 25% or something uh, to 75%. So it has to start as, you know, in right back at the, at the beginning. And then um, I think all the, the, the uh, which I think is happening now more and more, honestly, I think the networks, the um, producers all have to have a real, and that means bringing people up and bringing people into their fold so they get to know them and get to trust them. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's a big money game. So if it goes sideways, it's expensive. And it really just comes down to, I don't think there's any, I honestly think it's more about that than it is about gender. I don't think it's as exclusive to a gender situation or it's just access. So if you don't have access, you can't prove to the world that you are able. And if you can't prove that you're able, it's very hard to get the work. Yeah. Well, Carrie, we hope to see um, you up on stage at the Emmys. Good luck and um, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, putting up with the airport. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing you again.